Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God. Before I get to this review, and I'm actually doing this because of something I learned in the book, I am very embarrassed about this cyst on my cheek. It actually looks like way less noticeable on camera. <laughs> it's very painful. I don't know if it's actually a cyst, but this week I'm gonna do something about it. Again, the only reason I'm, I'm mentioning it is because I'm embarrassed by it. But in, I, until then, I really see the payoff in simply making the video anyway. As Mark Zuckerberg said once, move fast and break things. Anyway, this book is written by media personality. He's from a hip-hop radio show called The Breakfast Club and tends to get a bad rep for asking questions and stating opinions that are very polarizing to lots of artists. And lots of people don't know because of this whether he's just stupid and doesn't know any better or he's genuinely expressing himself and just has the courage to do it. This book heavily illuminates the latter of the two. The thing is you just can't expect a book like this from a man who isn't willing to learn from his mistakes. For anyone who doesn't know, I'm an entirely self-produced rapper and singer. I think I'm better at making music than I am at anything else I've ever done. I make all the beats in these videos. You can find my music on my YouTube channel playlists. But I stopped making music a few months ago and I decided to move to and consistently focus on book reviews. And my reasoning behind that is that the music industry now has too many ideas and not enough money for it to go around. And it's only getting worse on both ends as time goes by. And it also really took me three years of dedicating literally all the time I possibly could to music, like by the minute, and an attempt to move to Atlanta. Just to realize that the industry is not worth it anymore to me. I just don't, I don't see it. The more I learned, the more things just didn't add up anymore. And it hit me that there's a difference between doing what you love and doing whatever it takes. So I'm not involving myself in it anymore. But when I was, I was listening to this book and re-listening to it. Literally, I spent all day today re-listening to it and I still got a lot out of it. If you are or are not a rapper, singer, producer, promoter, podcaster, radio show host, or anything like that, there are plenty of things I guarantee you could learn from it as well. By the way, I'm not giving up on making music. A reason that I had the idea of just doing these book reviews for months and months but didn't decide to actually straight up do it is because I wanted to really consider the risks of doing it. Like, you know, if I do this, it could be perceived as a sign from other rappers who already know about me and stuff as a sign of like weak mentality. Like I'm just kind of giving up. I'm not giving up on making music forever. I miss that so much, but really I'm just doing it until further notice. And in this book, he does talk about why he thinks honesty is his best friend and his secret weapon. I really wish more rappers would read. There are plenty of popular rappers who do read and their popularity, I'm pretty damn sure can probably have something to do with the fact that they read. The author says in the book himself that books are what provided me with a sense of escape when tensions between my parents made our home feel suffocated. Books gave me the confidence to dream when I wasn't supposed to as a poor black boy grown up from the South. Books are where I got the name Charlemagne. My life is a testament to the power of books. His and people who are like, who he probably looks up to. And this book talks about the people he grows, he grew up with in, oh, I forget where, Moe's Corner, I think is what it's called, in Charleston, South Carolina, telling the type of stories that America seems to just push under the rug nowadays. It talks about the mistakes he made that could have been avoided and what we can learn from them. The small ones and big ones. It talks about the spiritual legacy that African Americans can live in the South 400 years later. It talks about UFOs at his grandmother's house, his gra his crazy cousins, and the guys he sold and or smoked crack with, and plenty more. There are eight principles to bl the concept of black privilege that he proposes here, and let's go over each one. Principle one is it's not the size of the pond, but the size of the hustle in the fish. In this principle, he talks about how he found these things, or I guess these things found him, books and hip hop that made him feel really empowered. And like, he always knew that there was more to life than just the town he was in from a young age actually he grew up constantly thinking that there is more just beyond where he is and you can believe me when i say that i did and still do relate to that so deeply <laughs> principle two is pyp pick your passion poison or procrastination and i think it's like this because he was originally so young and passionate until he started surrounding himself with the wrong people by 18 he had multiple trips to summer school two expulsions and three arrests and it's mostly because those people he spent his time with they really shaped what he used his strengths for principle three is 
smashing that like button in case you haven't already for the YouTube algorithm and it helps with SEO and ranking and all this other stuff and I really appreciate it because so much work goes into making these videos. He calls it fuck your dreams which is basically about the epidemic of false dream chasing. In the African American community books like this are if you don't particularly understand African American culture this is that type of book you might want to check out. Principle four is that there are no losses, only lessons. And so much shit happens in this chapter about his experience getting into the radio industry and getting fired from multiple places that are like, well, well if, you, if, you, if this if doesn't, doesn't go well, well then you're, you're done, done forever. forever. But I think the way he handled these things is definitely a testament to the notion that life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Principle five is put the weed in the bag. And there's a lot of straight talk in this chapter about the whole, you know, success iceberg. There is just so much more about how people got to where they are than just the surface level and what you see on it. Things like this are just why I look at people and assume that they have worked like hell to get where they are, no matter where it is. And no matter what they worked on, it requires just as much energy to say yes to something as it does to say no to that thing. And it's all about what you put your energy into that can take you where you want to be. Well, it's not all about that, it's about a bunch of other things, but that's a huge factor. Principle six is live your truth. And I think that when I mentioned at the beginning that honesty is his best friend and his secret weapon, this chapter can tell you all about why. Honesty really seems to be like the biggest thing in this book that just makes it so unique. Not honesty at least, but, but the focus that it puts on honesty. Principle seven, give people the credit they deserve for being stupid. And I learned that a lot of people are basically just, we will never know everything. And we can get a lot out of not just owning that principle six, but giving each other credit for it, or at least being understanding of it. There's also in this chapter a big, big rant about race and like racial privilege and stuff like that as well, which I found fascinating. I mean, I do everything I can to follow this type of advice. And it's funny to me how the more I learn about it, the less I find myself having to try to do it. And principle eight is something I don't really know how to follow, uh, which is access your black privilege. If you don't think there's hope in this whole racism inequality thing that seems to be happening in America, I definitely recommend checking out the book. For this chapter alone, it's very powerful. And if that doesn't sound like I'm saying much because I'm white, I think I could probably understand why someone would feel that way, but I definitely urge you to not let that completely dissuade you from checking out other reviews from people who are whatever you need them to be. To see it like that, quotes, if you don't have anything nice to say to someone, say it anyway. Never stunt your own growth by dismissing something just because it's unfamiliar. Destiny isn't a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. When you see guys coming from backgrounds like yours popping champagne on yachts, driving around in the flyest cars and wearing expensive jewelry, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking, hey, I can do that too. Don't dream too big is a very poisonous thought to put into a young person. Nothing worth knowing can be taught. You can talk about all the magazines or blow ups you've read of rappers dissing each other, but ultimately sharing your own life is what will take you to the next level. Women are so used to having dudes brag about how big they are, but then fail to measure up in the moment of truth that when you do the opposite, you will be a breath of fresh air. Sometimes you have to give people today so you can have tomorrow. It's important to remain open to your relationship with the world. When you are constantly around the same old people who are experiencing the same old things and having the same discussions about it, you will stagnate. Change is the basis of growth and growth is the basis of life. Direction one. I recommend this book to anyone who feels like they seriously just can't relate to or understand African-American culture like at all. I feel like this is the type of book that can shed lots of insight on that that a lot of us could probably use in America nowadays. I also recommend it to anyone who thinks that, you know, this or that is the white man's fault and there's nothing that any of us can do about it. Like many of those things are the white man's fault, sure. But when you take perspective into account, well, the book can explain the rest of that for me. <laughs> the way I feel about it is pretty much the same. The whole Farrakhan thing, I'm not 
entirely sure that I understood. I never really looked into Farrakhan because I heard about him, in, I, you know, I heard about Malcolm X and I've heard about Martin Luther King and I've learned about them through audiobooks, but I haven't heard anything about Farrakhan. So I looked him up because I've heard him from music but not books. And I found this quote from him. I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not. The Jews don't like Farrakhan, so they call me Hitler. Well, that's a good name. Hitler was a very great man. I was raised in a Jewish household. I was in a Jewish youth group for five years. I went to a Jewish sleepaway camp for seven, and I went to a Jewish private school for nine. And I just don't know how I can agree with that. Like, so many people look up to this Farrakhan guy, and like, what do I not understand about him or that? that actually kind of like justifies it and says, you know, this does really make sense. Who's like, the way I look at it, other than Hitler's ambition and public speaking skills for sure, what is there to learn from him? Maybe, I, I really hope someone who knows more about this stuff can tell me what I'm missing here. I am not all that informed, but I am all ears. Direction two, if you like this book, I recommend checking out Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, because this definitely talks about America, and particularly the South, of like what it's like to grow up in that area, but apartheid is particularly highlighted, and what it's like to grow up in South Africa, and it's very exciting? There's something very exciting about the book Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. It's an illuminating and exciting book for sure. Black Privilege by Charlemagne the God. There's a link to it in the description if you guys want to check it out and read the reviews. That and all the other books that I mentioned in this video. If there are any other books that you guys want me to check out and review, please let me know in the comments below. And also let me know if you checked out this book and you liked it. But hey, make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. I don't know why people watch this far into my videos and they don't subscribe. Maybe I'll hear about it in a book or something someday. If you have subscribed but you want to turn it up a notch and turn on that notification bell to receive a notification every time I drop a new video, that would mean the world to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You can find me everywhere and I will see you then.